the end of this video we'll have a minimap that shows us where the enemies are compared to you. We will also have shoot particles like hit particles and also when we destroy an enemy it explodes. Hey I'm Max and welcome to part 4 of how to make a plane shooter game. Today we will add explosion and hit particles when we hit the plane and we'll add a minimap to see where every enemy plane is. First let's create the two particle system and set them as prefab so we can spawn them when we get hit or die. So right click, go into effects and then particle system. Now you can zoom in on it and maybe bring it up a little bit so we can see it better. So I'll rename this one it particles. To set the texture of the particles so it's not just a circle, I'll check texture sheet animation and in mode I just set sprite and here I'll drag the bullet hit particle. So first here in lifetime you want to do random between two constant and set it something like 0.1 and 0.3. Yep, that looks good. Now the speed already looks good. The size is definitely too big. I think I'll go random once again so it looks better. 0.1 and 0.2. Yep, that looks good. And start rotation, I'll do random between 0 and 360. Now simulation space you gotta set world otherwise they're gonna follow the plane. In emission you can set the rate over time to zero and instead add a burst at time zero of let's say 10. And in the shape here we want to set it as a sphere. Okay I'm starting to realize that the speed may be a bit too fast, let's say 3. Yeah that's better. Now let's check size over lifetime and set it as a down curve. Now we can uncheck looping so we can make it play only once. Now let's go in our prefab and drag the hit particles in. Let's delete it in the scene. Let's create the other one. So particle system. I'll create this one. I'll call this one explosion. For the lifetime on this one I'll do let's say 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. The speed 5 is probably good. Size 1 maybe not. Maybe like 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 start rotation just like the other one, 0, 0360 simulation space world emission 0 at a burst of actually for this one I think I'll do 15 shape sphere size over lifetime same thing down curve texture sheet animation sprite and then I'll put in the explosion sprite yeah that looks pretty good so I'll disable looping and I'll put it in the prefab. Now let's create a simple script so we can make our particle system destroy when it's done. Otherwise it's just going to keep a bunch of useless game objects. So let's call it particle destroy. This script is really easy. All you have to do is create a private particle system and call it something like ps. In start you do ps equals get component particle system. And in update you just do if ps is stopped. So if the ps is done. So when the particle is stopped we want to destroy the game object. It's really that simple. Now let's go back on our prefabs, both particle system and add the particle destroy. It particles, particles destroy. And that's good. Now let's go in our plane script, add a public game object hit particles and explosion. Okay so to make the particle spawn we'll do here in the if HP is less or equal to zero so if we die we want to instantiate an explosion at the transform the position so at the plane with the quaternon.identity because we don't want any rotation on it and here we can do instantiate hit particles with the same parameters so transform position quaternon identity and also if you don't want hit particles to show after we die because an explosion and hit particles at the same time may look a bit weird we can add a return here. Don't forget to go on your enemy prefab and on your player plane and add both the explosion and the hit particles. So on the enemy and now on the player plane, plane is here, hit particles and explosion. So now as you can see the hit particles are spawning below my enemy as a child but I'm not seeing them. That's because the order and layer is wrong once again. So let's open up the prefabs in the particles and go in the renderer and set order and layer to 1 for both the it particles and 
the explosion or the layer 1. Ok so I reduced the enemy's HP to 3 just to test it out so the hit particles work and the death explosion works. Now let's add the minimap. So first go in your canvas, add the UI image and now add the background for your minimap. In my case I'll just use the button because I don't really care for this tutorial but you should try to make a texture more appropriate to a minimap than this. Under that minimap I'll create a UI image and I'll call that the player dot and all I have to do is drag dot as the sprite set the color to green let's say for the player and make it smaller okay like this now I will add another image and I'll call it enemy dot and once again I'll drag the dot I'll set it to red and I'll make it just as small as the player so I'll just copy the hit the height and width all right, and I actually want to add this enemy dot as a prefab and delete it from the scene and we will create them in the script of UI so let's go in UI let's add a public game object minimap and we also want to have a enemy dot prefab now we want to be using system dot collections dot generic and that's because we want to create a private list of game objects which are going to be the enemy dots so I'll call them, oh no not like this, enemy dots equals to new list of game object and here in the update we'll do enemy array enemies equals to find objects of type just like last time with an S enemy and before looping through all my enemies and setting them in the list I want to make sure that the list contains enough enemy dots for the enemies so I'll do if enemy dots dot count is less than enemies dot length so if there are less enemies in the minimap than in the array I want to do enemy dots dot add and then instantiate a new enemy dots prefab at the uh, minimap dot transform so it's a child of the minimap and actually I don't want to do this just once if there's two enemies that we have to add I want to do it twice so I'll do while the enemy count is lower than the enemies count like the enemy on the minimap is lower than the enemies then I want to keep repeating this I also want to make sure that I don't have too many dots on the minimap if you destroy a plane I want it to disappear so I'll do while the same thing pretty much but with a greater than and to remove one I'll just do remove at and I'll actually do zero because it doesn't matter so here we actually need to get each index for each of the arrays so a for each is not going to work we want to use a classic for int loop so for int i equals zero so we'll start at zero and then we'll keep going with that loop until i well for as long as i is less than enemies dot count enemies dot dot count and we'll just add one each time so this is how the loop works it starts at zero it goes until this is reached and this is what it does each time it loops so in this for loop we'll just do enemy dots at position i so the element i and the enemy dots dot transform dot position and now I actually want to go check how big my minimap is I didn't think about it but that's very important so I'll set the width to 200 and the i to 100 so now that I know my minimap is 200 by 100 I just have to map the position of the player in the map to the position of the player in the minimap so 40 would be equal to 100 on the X because if the enemy is at 40 is at the edge of the map and here if it's at 200 is at the edge of the minimap so we just have to map this to this so here I'll just try it out randomly see how that goes I'll just do um, enemies I so the enemy dot transform dot position over 40 times 100 and I'll just do parentheses here to make sure it works and I'm not sure if that's going to look good but we'll try it out that's what it's about when you're making games you gotta try some things out and see how it goes you can't get everything right the first time don't forget to go on your camera in your UI script and add the minimap so just drag in the minimap game object and the enemy dot game object prefab so now it did create an enemy dot 
but it's very far from where we want it to be and that's because I forgot to add the position of the minimap so it's screening it as if the minimap was at 0, 0 so let's do that so here I'll just do minimap.transform.position plus that so that already looks pretty good I'm not sure if it goes correctly to the edge and all that stuff but it already looks decent and yeah, it seems like there's a bit of problem with the edges, but the big problem right now is that it doesn't scale with the player. I always want the player to be in the middle, so I want the enemies to scale around it. But now they're just showing their place in the overall map. So either you can move the player to its place in the minimap as well, or you can make the enemies change depending on where the player is. So here I'll try doing plus player controller dot transform.position see what it does I'm not sure if that's gonna work let's not forget here to scale or like transform the position of the player into minimap position so we'll do the same thing divided by 40 and times 100 I'll add parentheses just to be safe and let's see if that works okay so that didn't work as I wanted so let's try minus that seems to be working pretty good let's try it out until the edge and they pop out the other side. They kind of pop out outside of the minimap though. Let's fix this by making this let's say times 80. So here I'll try to optimize it by putting the minus in, in here so I don't have to do the division and multiplication two times and it's also going to make it much simpler. So I can remove this and just like that. Actually just to be a little cleaner I'll put this as a vector tree outside and anyway I'm going to need it for other things. I'll set it at distance and put distance down here and now just to make sure that the enemy dots don't go outside of the minimap when the player is moving we want to check if the distance dot x is less than minus 40 so if it's too far to the left then we simply want to throw it to the right so we'll do distance dot x plus equal 80 and we'll do the opposite else if distance x is greater than 40 we will throw it to the left so minus equal 80 Okay, so the plane is to the right, now I'm flying to the left and it teleports to the other side and there you go. So that's a cool little minimap that shows where the enemies are compared to you, keeping you in the middle. That looks way better in my opinion than making the player move and teleport because that can be hard to tell if the enemy is close. Thanks for watching part 4 of the plane shooter game, make sure to subscribe for the other parts.